Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we have an After Dark episode today, and I am excited for the lovely, beautiful Miss Madison Ivy. Hi. Hello, Hi. beautiful. Hello, gorgeous. See, we brought, the, we brought the applause out for you. I was going to say, you got the live studio it's audience. It's been like, you know, so long since I've seen you, since I've spoke to you. I mean, it's one of those things because, you know, you follow each other on social media. But even that, when it gets deleted, you're like, where did you go? Honestly. I know you're on social media, but where is it? Or the shadow ban thing. So it's like you're still uh, there, but yes. you're not there. That's true. Right. Very true. So I'm excited to get to see what you've been up to. You look very sexy. Thanks for um, Thank dressing up for after dark you know i just wanted to look nice for you because like you said i haven't seen you in so long yes i thought i had to wear something really tight and fitting mm -hmm. so you could see my whole you know all the curves you know you like to That's tease the most perfect you curves must. i think i've teased you since i've known you i feel like yes not intentionally you have. but intentionally sure but you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what have you been up to oh my goodness besides becoming a complete recluse like everyone else yes I mean, I started actually my OnlyFans the day the pandemic shut down. Oh, happened. wow. Okay. So I kept very busy. Was that, that because of the shutdown announcement or was it because it was just timing just kind of happened because it was around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Myself, you know, I had one probably for two years almost, but oh. I never really did much with it okay. because I was so busy doing exoticas and dancing and stuff. Like, you know, you have the content, but you don't really know mm -hmm. what kind of power you have with that at the time you know what i mean Definitely. so um once the shutdown happened i don't think it was the immediate day but um it was <laughs> it was actually the day we You're all like, went into quarantine Damn it, <laughs> it could have possibly i mean at that time it was like how was that feeling for you were you panicked you know i wasn't that panicked because i back in 2015 was in a horrible car accident and i was bedridden for a year mm. so in my mind i was like okay this sucks we all do have to stay home but there was a part of me that was like you couldn't get out of bed for almost a year. This is going to be easy. You can go to the kitchen. You can do stuff still. Yeah. That's a great mindset. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like I've always been a fan of you before because of all the adversities that you've, you know, overcome oh. and achieved and done so much and not in such a... Um, not saying that in a public way, but a very quiet and tasteful way within yourself. And like you came back a whole new person, you know what I mean? And so I feel like it probably only made you stronger as a female and empowered you more because of those adversities of being mm -hmm. bedridden, you know, having, you know, not knowing the outcome of what it was. And it was a really scary time, you know, Definitely. even for us in the industry is because, you know, we all feel like we're family and we're like, oh, but there's nothing really you right. can do. And it's like, you know, so it's one of those things. So I definitely mm -hmm. am happy that you are still, you know, here with us and thank you for doing all those things and, you know, empowering women, you know, and, and your fans just wow. to say that you could come back. Thank you so much. Honestly, that means so much because, you know, when you're the person going through it, you're just you're just working on surviving and just being better every single day. But when other people kind of like see your struggle and are like, wow, it's great to see you doing so well. That really means so much because that's all I want to do in life is just live, exist, and help inspire people that might be having a little bit of hard time themselves. For sure. Do you That's still struggle with anything from your accident or are you completely recovered? You know, I'm still going through surgeries, actually. I just had an emergency testinal surgery um, back in November. Oh, wow. Uh, that was because of my accident. They just decided. Was it something that happened immediate or is over time you kind of like felt that it was something that you were going to have mm. to do? Well, I had heard that this was something that could be a possibility. Oh, okay. This could happen to you at any time. And then, boom, just one day it happened, and it's like, oh, okay, well, now we're having surgery again. Yeah. But it was, like, otherwise perfectly fine before that. Besides, I have some metal in my spine holding it together, but it just pinches me a little Does bit. Does it hold you back anything from sexually? You know, you are obviously a porn star and a you know, performer. A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. In what ways? In, like, the arching. It's okay. really hard because it's in my lower back area, so I can't get that, like... Perfect. It's like you can't scratch that itch, but you're almost yes. there. Almost <laughs> there, honestly. Yeah. And I'm sure it's one of those things, too, is because you can't do it. You want to do it more. So it's bad. like, <laughs> I'm just like, bend me over. Because that's when it feels good. <laughs> so does that mean certain positions you can't do? Or just the arch of like being deep in the net? I can do them, actually, but it's like with the adrenaline of when you're actually having sex, it blocks out that like sensation, that okay. weird pulling. True, and beta blocker. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're doing just like photos or something, you really feel that pull, that strain mm. against the hardware. For sure. Mm. So do you, um, are you working for other companies or only your OnlyFans? Well, you know, I was working for, I mean, I've been, been working for browsers for forever. For sure. Love them so much. But I have been just taking it 
so easy. I feel like after the accident, I came back super quickly because I was just, I really wanted to get back to everyone, mm-hmm. the beauties, the Ooh. booties, all the deliciousness. But uh, but I just now, just taking a break for the last like two and a half, almost three years. So because of you like knowing, like you said, you, you literally couldn't get out of bed mm-hmm. and having your, your mindset kind of having to change and reworking into the industry, do you feel like that kind of helped you with the pandemic or made it even worse? I definitely think it helped in so many different ways. The, I mean, you know how it is when you're constantly traveling. There's probably some people who are like, you know what? It's kind of nice to have that forced moment. Well, you also feel like you can't, like you can't not be doing something. Yes. (laughs) It's like the FOMO. (laughs) Right? I was just thinking about this this morning where I was like, wow, before the pandemic, if I didn't hit up one country and three states in every month, I was unhappy. For sure. It's like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Not doing enough. Yes. It's like, I want more. For it's sure. absurd. <laughs> it's funny, though, but, but it's true. It's I think mm. it's, you know, everyone's perspective of it's a little bit different. I feel like because when you're go, go, you don't realize that you're like how go, 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 go you are. You know what I mean? Until you got that setback of like, oh, I have to sit here. But I can also sit here and still make the same money. You just mm. got to think differently. Honestly, thinking differently and also putting in all the effort. Because before, I was putting in effort. But now it's like I'm doing the jobs with like 10 people. I do all my own editing, posting, hair, makeup. I make all of my own outfits. Amazing. Which, oh, I made this for Ooh, you last yay, night. presents. I love it. I always see you're, you're so creative. Like you do all your little like jewels and outfits. I'm like, oh, she's so sexy. I couldn't help but make you something. Ooh, fun. You are such a pretty kitty. I love this. I get this. So. Private talk. You know what's so funny is I was going out the other night mm. and I don't go out that often, but I was, you know, stepping outside mm. and I had a crown and I was like, should I wear this? And my birthday is coming up mm. at the end of the month. And I was like, and she was like, Ugh. my girlfriend was like, maybe not this time because it's not your birthday, but these are very um, great. Birthday, right? Yes, I like them. Can you put them on me? Because I yes. can't see what this looks like. Oh. I want to wear them. Let's talk about this. Mm. I just love making little accessories and things. How's that feel? It feels good, but does it, yeah? It is actually, it gonna it's go? sitting perfectly. It's over, it's in the front of my ears. How's that? Push a little bit, a little bit. There. Hey, Yay. good? Yeah. Yay! Oh, so I love it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Problem. So let's talk about you making your own outfits. Is this something yes. that you just, because you were bored, you always have this talent, this like, because you've always been like, doing your mm. own stuff. Yeah, I can't help it. It's like the crafty little devil within me, but it's also the control DIY freak. queen? Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm four feet 11, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, 149 centimeters for the metric system people. <laughs> um, but trying to find clothes that Fun size. fit. I mean, just now, within the last like three or four years, they're starting to make sizes for like really short people Mm -hmm. who are also a little bit curvaceous. Okay. And before that was not a thing that almost you could find anywhere. I had to have everything tailored. So I was like, I'm just going to make it. So do you do not only just for your, you know, you're saying you're doing your costumes for your Mm -hmm. OnlyFans when you do your scenes, but do you do like maybe have your own side business doing clothing as well? You know, I actually am going to start doing that in some capacity. I was thinking about it really heavily before the pandemic Mm -hmm. and I was going to do like high end accessories and fun, like really kind of like the Honey Burdette feel Mm -hmm. actually but with a little bit more gems. I love that for you. You're always like, you know, your energy is always very happy. I feel like you're very um, easily like you're a fun time. So I feel like you could bring that out in your clothes and your accessories to make people feel good about what you're wearing, you know, because it's like I feel like you have a good way of of advertising that Mm -hmm. and dressing for like the things that are going to make you feel your best self because it's like there is some stuff we want to wear it but it just doesn't make us feel our best self what's the craziest thing that you've made that's like time consuming wise and like outfit i mean i made an entire like pot leaf poison ivy replica costume so it's like poison ivy from the tim burton batmans but with pot leaves and embroidering these pot leaf individuals were just it was exhausting. It was exhausting. It was How many exhausting. hours of work did this take? I mean, I probably spent over like 120, maybe 140 hours wow, just dedication. on that one. So did you have the skills before? Did you teach yourself? Well, I was the weird homeschooled kid. So okay. I'm Why do you think that's weird though? Because I think anybody automatically assumes that someone who hasn't had like normal socialization. Okay. How old are you? I'm 31 now. Okay. So, so I mean, I guess that I'm 36. Mm. So for me, it's like, 
there was some people homeschooled, but not a lot. Yeah. So I could see, like, but I don't, I don't feel like, I still, I feel like sometimes we put these stigmas on ourselves because we think like mm. of whatever, but I don't think that's weird. It was just different and that worked for you. Just different. Mm -hmm. Usually though, I find that the um, homeschool kids, and I was kind of one of those, are usually the religious kids. Okay. So the, not that religion is ever a bad thing in my mind. I want people to believe what they want to believe and spread love and joy and positivity. And I never want to shame anyone for that. But when you come from a religious family who's so close, well, that's off, like the main, yes, yeah. everything you do is wrong. It's it definitely creates some very weird things within you that you have to unlearn when you get out into the real world and being like, Oh no, that's, that's you're wrong mm -hmm. and stupid a little bit. Yeah. Or, I like that you say unlearn because I feel like, you know, I've done a lot of within the pandemic and just kind of having the time to sit down, work on myself as well. And things that you don't realize, like, you know, everybody has their own issues and their problems mm. and things, but things that we don't realize that it's a patterns from our past that keeps being yes. repeated, that if we don't unlearn the patterns and do it the way that's giving for yourself and your situation, mm -hmm. then you'll always be in that repetitive pattern constantly it's exhausting you that's know? something gotta get I'm, off that wheel <laughs> yeah, honestly get off that wheel and onto my face yes wow. she's <laughs> wanted me to sit on her face for a long time for so long. <laughs> and yet it's it's never happened no I know I was thinking and I was like I feel like were we in something that was like in a big scene and around each other I feel like I've been in something with you but yes. not with you well I remember the first time I actually ever saw you oh let's and talk about it private talk it was <laughs> For for real, it was her her beautiful rear end walking hey. around the corner, and I was like, "Whoa, who's that?" And I'm sitting down in the makeup chair, and I'm just trying to follow this beautiful booty. Follow and they're the booty. like, "Oh, that's Alexis Texas." And it was on set for Digital Playground, and you were wearing this all white outfit with these white tight spandex. Mm, I'm trying to remember in my I'll porno never database. Forget that day. I love that. Mm -hmm. I remember, it, you know, it's one of those things when you when you're new in the industry too. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, you have a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, I, um, you like, again, you see people, but you don't know them and you don't want to be like, hey, who are you? Even though yeah. that's like common to do when you don't know people, right? but you're also intimidated. You know, don't want to like mm -hmm. mess up their thing. I was like, I, for me, I always feel like the first, like the, when you're the like new kid at school and it's like, uh, hi guys. Like until you get that feeling where you've been working for the same crew and you know the same people, like you just kind of like don't really know where yeah. you like, where do I fit in? It's like hopscotch. It's like, when are we going to jump into this 100%. situation? I'm gonna, hey. And then when I'm naked, I'm the more like, I'm the most like, um, confident. I'm like, Hey guys, my mm -hmm. ass cops want to hear it. <laughs> hey, I've got like really big lips. And I like, call them bat wings. I start chasing people around with them, but when I close on, definitely nervous and then when I'm naked I'm like hey 100%. let's talk about <laughs> there's something powerful about being naked I agree with that brings the power I feel like that's why um you know being in the industry when I was turning was 21 but I felt like it made me each year and each like even really seen made me more empowered as a woman and really mm -hmm. knew got to know what my womanly body was definitely and like growing into my sexuality and you know even like having mm -hmm. new partners but it was also in a safe way mm -hmm. and it was also in like a Everyone was like, oh, what's your greatest fantasy? I've mm -hmm. fucked them all. Like, I've done them all. Like, you know what I mean? I never thought I wanted to be a nurse or a fucking Ooh. teacher or a fucking whatever. But I did it. And, I, you know, and maybe I didn't like all of them or the costumes or the outfits. <laughs> but I still like the sex. Exactly. So that's why I was like, I don't know. Mm. I feel that, honestly. There's so many different fantasies that I've gotten to fulfill. And everyone always asks. That's, like, the number one, like, interview question. That what, and what's your favorite position? Yes. What is your favorite <laughs> Also, what is the perfect size? Mm. There is no perfect size out there. There is different sizes, there's different flavors, and there's different days. I think there's a perfect size for you. I think that for there's you. personal preference, but I don't think that it makes her like your dick in, like bad or good. Like people yeah. always think like they want to live up to something. Just fuck. Well, do you find that on like certain days that you're like, okay, today is a day that I want to be like just completely destroyed. Like break me in half over you. And then there's some days that's like, love me, cuddle me, and fuck me. In porn, I never wanted to be cuddled. No, absolutely well, not. Definitely like that's not why porn. where I feel like for me, like and Cutting I think in porn is weird. And it's weird. How long have you been in the industry? Oh God. Um, let me do the math. Thirteen years. Okay. So um, so I don't really know my math, but I know it's up there. I'm like <laughs> I'm like sorry I was twenty one, I'm thirty six now, y'all do the math. Anyways, so I feel like, especially like in your you know, you, you 
you elevate as a woman. So it's like you like certain sexual things in the beginning that you didn't know, 100%. and then you kind of go through phases. I feel like I always was a very over-sexual person. That's why I got into porn, and I loved expressing myself through my scenes and having a you know, fulfilling time. I feel like now as I get older and like not doing as many scenes, mm -hmm. sex for me has changed. 100%. So it's like that's when I want the cuddles. That's when I, now I want to be fucked appropriately. Yes. But it's like on set, I never felt that desire to. Where now Definitely. it's like I have to, like I say, I'm demisexual. I need to be mind stimulated first before I want to, like, before my pussy's getting wet for you. 100%. And in, in porn, I didn't care because I wasn't trying to date any of these people. So most times I didn't care what they fucking look like. I just want them you know, to do their job. <laughs> exactly, to do your job. And sometimes that is uh, an insane level of thing to ask for. Asking someone to just show up and do their job sometimes feels like a very difficult task. Because I'm sure And not only just in porn. Yes, not only just in porn, but in every aspect of life. Getting someone to show up and just do their job and do it well, like they care, is very difficult. You know, I always felt like, I said, like we're like se sexual athletes. It's like we're helping people one orgasm at a time. Like, you know, you just kind of keep on fucking. So I feel like, you know, 100%. I wanted to go in in every scene mm. like I was going to win that game. Mm -hmm. There was no game but to, be able to get the come at the end of that shot. Oh. But that's what I was there for, and I was always trying to get it. And, <laughs> and I get, I get and boy, did I get mad <laughs> if I don't get it. Like I used oh. to also like try to make people come like early, early. Yeah, like it was a thing. Like I remember certain people who did it. I was like, ah, gotcha. Yeah, but then you could also ruin your whole fucking day. So you know, it's it's, it's like, okay, do I want? <laughs> it could go do both I ways. Win? Because that means technically for you guys out there after dark that if someone comes early and they don't get the cum shot, then gotta you wait. gotta do it again. Yep. And most guys can't just really come and come again. They mm -hmm. gotta like have a downtime, and some. They get real embarrassed because that cum shot came out early. So. Ooh, or it goes straight in your ear for some reason. Um, where's the worst place you've ever gotten <laughs> the cum shot? God, I mean, I feel like in the eyes is like easily the worst spot, but it depends if you get it in both eyes. And yeah, if for some reason they have aggressive sperm. Oh, so I'm going to break Like you've. I see, I yeah. thought I was like the only person. I'm like, why does it feel like there's sperm swimming in my eye? Like I feel, and like it almost gave me. <laughs> it like my whole eye was red. Like mm. there's a difference between like yeah, okay, it comes in and it, like burns, mm -hmm. cool. But there was I remember this one time distinctly. I wish I knew who it was. I probably if I thought about it long enough, whatever. But I was like, what's? Why does it feel like someone's beating at my eyeball? Like I feel like there's a sperm. <laughs> It's like I want to get at you. And then it was it always anybody saw that movie um what was uh we went with Cameron Diaz and she was like Chicago she was like looking at she was at a truck like a truck stop and she's like oh the puppy and she's oh, looking at is the, that thing. the sweetest thing yes, yes yes and it's like the puppy and she's looking at it and it's like what a like glory hole and the guy sticks yes. his dick in her eye and I was like I didn't have a dick in my eye but I had it <laughs> sit which I'm not going to lie there is something strangely attractive to me about a glory hole have you ever been glory holed? No. Is that a thing anymore in like, porn? I don't, I don't know. think so. I don't think we've, uh, no one has booked a glory hole scene because hey, I Hey, you think can do it on your OnlyFans. I yeah. mean, as long as it's not against your guidelines. The true. <laughs> I'm not Disembodied like dick. Is that against guidelines? <laughs> <laughs> How do you, okay, so what turns you on about the glory hole? Let's talk about this more. I think it's definitely like that, like. Because um, you don't know who the dick belongs to? A little bit, that debaucherous nature, because I think one of my favorite fantasies, and I don't actually have many favorite fantasies I you feel like. You masturbate to this. I know you do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I could hear the voice. This is my favorite. Yes. But essentially, I am like alone in the middle of a room tied to a chair mm -hmm. because I'm a very bad girl and I need to be restrained. <laughs> now, finish that. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I'm all, where's the good part, Madison? But I have to be blindfolded. You have to be blindfolded. And tied up. And tied up. That's a lot of trust. Okay. There's a lot of trust. <laughs> yeah, I'm trusting these humans because this is why it's a fantasy because there's no one I would barely trust to do this to okay. me. And it would have to be for a scene. But how many people? I mean, how many? Oh, so that it doesn't is the stop. Question. So is it like you never know and it's just like you're sitting never there endless times? No. Wow. Endless That's times. kind of really hot because if you think about mm. it, it's each scenario or each person is a mm. different fantasy. And realistically, it could be one person with an extreme amount of energy. Yeah. Who or just knows? fuck you different ways. It or doesn't fuck all... you different ways. Yeah. Or it could be 10 people. Mm. But you, but do you think you would, well, you would have to, I'm like, <laughs> you'd have to know it'd be 10 different people because 10 different dicks feel differently in your pussy. 
yes, yes, you're very right on that. And we're like, wait, you can't grow that much, uh, sir. Yeah. What is going on? But the, someone could trick you if they're really skillful with toys. And even mm, though some say, toys, yeah. they do, they're getting closer with the texture, I feel like. Some of these real dicks, I'm like, okay, that is nice. I've definitely collected some boyfriends, you know. Like, yes. Well, I call them my boyfriends. I have the to-go <laughs> boyfriends as well. <laughs> but, you know, they stick onto the wall. The, actually, I realized it stuck onto my wall the other day. I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> I love the multiple boyfriends stuck yeah. on the wall. Yeah. I like it. So are you, mm. would you say, what is your favorite kind of dick? Do you, since you say that it's like not a size that, but what is your preference? If you had a preference in those things, so it, is it be a size thing? Would it be the stamina thing? Would it be an I uncut? Think, well, I definitely am a little bit of a monster. Mm. I am a gremlin that will haunt your pants. And you will not be able to get rid of me. So prepare to be super dehydrated if you date me. And I think like certain dicks work best for certain positions. Okay. Like if so, it depends on the guy. Depends on the guy. But my favorite, I think my favorite by far is like perfectly straight. Mm. Actually, I that's think hard to find. It is hard to find. I found I one found one time. One. <laughs> oh, is it currently in your? Ro are you with this person, mm -hmm. or do you have? Are you single? Or? I am with this person. Okay. Actually, I had. A secret boyfriend on my OnlyFans, but because of the pandemic, he had to go back to his regular job. Oh. And so we couldn't be friends anymore. Okay. So, but then I met the person of my dreams. Nice. So he's your boyfriend at this time. Yes. Nice. Is he your only on your OnlyFans doing naughty things with you? He is not on my OnlyFans right now because he is... Is this new relationship? It's a little bit new. So it's definitely kind of like, I don't ever want to pressure anyone. Yeah. And also, I don't want to put the stress on like our personal sex because I do save certain things actually for my personal life that I don't do on film and people I think they think that I don't like these things when in reality I love these things okay but so I, what yeah. are some of those things well I don't do a lot of anal actually on okay. camera and I fucking love anal all right and that's something that you need in your personal sex life yes okay 100% whether it's like toys or with my person like I need that okay or if even they just watch me do it so like, are you doing that type of stuff on your OnlyFans by yourself I am. Okay. Yeah. Just not with partners. Yeah, not really with partners, which I do love doing it with partners, but because Just, of my back issues, yeah, I'm taking it easy. So anal is something that you, it's kind of like off limits yeah. on, the, on, you know, scene wise. What else? Is anything else? Yes. Well, I've never done a scene, I guess, in mainstream, oop, in mainstream with a delicious chocolate man because all my boyfriends are chocolate mm. and I, I save that for myself. Love it. Mm. Nice. Anything else? Mm, let's see DP as well mm. so that's another one that I've only done in my personal life actually that how do you find two dicks in your personal life that want to DP a girl you would be surprised because <laughs> that's like I feel like a really close and B well some guys are just like you know not really into like being in the same sexual setting with the dude it's very much hard with the with the balls touching that's what I'm saying because it's like yes. you're already like it's one thing like maybe you do a thing but like it's really close very close. Yeah, that is that is a big one. That communication barrier with like kind of getting there. And I think that is kind of like the discussion that comes out is like figuring out what bothers the other person. Mm -hmm. Really trying to work around those things. That's so. good though. I mean, it's communication is key in every relationship, I feel like. 100%. Because, you know, when I was in my relationship, when I was in the industry, we both were performers and it was like, we both talked about what we liked and didn't like. So, you know, and there was never an issue. Our issues were never because of porn. It was mm -hmm. outside of porn. It was like, you know, it was that kind of thing. So I feel like it should be in any case, even if they're not in the industry, I think that it's fair. I think you're doing the right thing as far as, mm -hmm. you know, protecting your relationship too, is because 100%. some people may, he may be okay with like what you're doing, but he may not be a, want to be a part of it or feel the pressure like that's what he, you know, that he has to perform he has or something. To perform. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of people is like, if you date an adult film star, you have to perform kind of thing it's like yes yeah, some people they, they want a partner who's going to be able to film with them constantly for me that isn't such a thing and also I don't know if like this was part of your guys' discussion if someone for some reason I don't care what it is they don't even need to really tell me if you don't want me working with someone particular maybe you see a little bit too much enjoyment there and it fucks with your ego a little bit mm -hmm. I won't do that because that's out of respect for the relationship for sure I think that if it's it's apparent enough for you to speak on it mm -hmm. then I think it's apparent enough to address it even if it makes no sense at all yes um you know for sure uh, we didn't really I feel like in my situation it wasn't really about people I didn't really mm -hmm. care about people 
I didn't, there wasn't really a lot of things I didn't like either. For me, it was just mm-hmm. like, if you have a great day, don't brag about it. I don't care what you want to do. Like, don't rub it in my face yes. kind of thing. If you want to talk about something cool, but like work is work and it is what it is kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. Like we can enjoy stuff together, but don't go telling me about stuff like that I wasn't even a part of in yeah. a way that's like, okay, now, now FOMO. I'm not your homie. I mean, yes. I, I'm not your boy. <laughs> There's, you know, boundaries. Yes. But for sure. So that was never an issue. But I think that boundaries with relationships in general, you know, mm. and sex things, especially like there's all kinds of different content out there. Even Instagram. Yes. There's some boyfriends that don't even like their girls posting like, you know, bikinis. It's pictures. Have you had anybody that you've been with kind of try to filter you or censor you, I guess, mm. as far as because of who you are? I mean, I feel like when I felt that person coming in trying to censor me, I just slowly started to gravitate away from them because I always knew, like, I'm never, I came from a family who's wonderful, but with very, like, you don't dress a certain way. Girls can't do that. Boys are allowed to, whatever it is. Like, there's so many stipulations. Do you think that that um, kind of made you be, why you're, like, the more rebellious of people's in certain eyes? Or do the opposite? Definitely. But also, like you said, very hypersexual person. Mm -hmm. I always knew that I love sex. I love feeling sexy. I love making people feel sexy. Mm -hmm. I just, even just like running my fingertips over someone is so erotic to me and I get such a buzz. I love that. From it. See, for me is why I feel like I've always gravitated why I I liked you and because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of girls in the industry who can say that, but I don't believe it. Like you can really sense it and like, and yes. you like, you live and breathe it. And so it, it yes. seems it's authentic. And so for me, if anyone's being authentic, then I can't nothing but respect that and like own to who you are. Because yeah. I think that that's what with the industry and even, you know, with everything, I think that that's who sets you apart of who you are and mm-hmm. why we're different, but also similar and can respect each other for the same things. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's such a big part of the industry where it's like, don't do something just for the money that's, kind of thing. I that is the worst to me when I get a girl who is like a pussy avoider, like someone who is licking the side <laughs> of your leg or like one girl. I'm not going to name names, but she, I sat on her face and instead of licking, she just went like no tongue, no nothing. Like she just. But did her you whips. say anything? No, because I'm just like, oh, God, you're one of those. And I should have stopped. I should have said something. Yeah. But in that situation, I'm like, how do I approach telling you? Know, you I'm trying to think about how, what I would do in myself. Like, yes. it's one of those things because sometimes you just, it's like, sometimes no response is a response kind of thing, but yes. not a different scenario, obviously. But it's yes. like, you could clearly tell you don't like this. This is also yes. why with me and with, which is weird when I say mm-hmm. it out loud, but like I was more picky with female performers that I worked with than with male performers. 100%. Mainly because of this issue. Mm-hmm. My thing was, is I never was with a girl until I was in the industry and me and Brianna mm-hmm. Love used to work side by side with each other and then they approached us and was like, would you mind doing a scene with her? And because I was so comfortable with her, I was like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So with that, I really loved girls and she was a true lesbian as well. Mm-hmm. And so she liked girls. So for me, I got kind of spoiled. And then after mm-hmm. that, I, w- I worked with Belladonna. We did Discovering Alexis, Texas. Love a Belladonna. And then I was definitely spoiled. So yeah. I was like, I want to be selective with the women I, I, I work with because mm-hmm. when I went into a scene after that, it was the same thing. She's like, I'm like, I eat good mm. pussy and I'm not trying to eat your pussy and you're going to be not doing anything to me. And yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like, I'm not here to fake it. Like I like yeah, even yeah. with male scenes, I, like I said, mm. I didn't need them to be whoever I, I would mm-hmm. date, but your dick better work and I'm going to get off and I'm going to have a great time. But if you can't do your part, mm-hmm. then we got a problem. Or if you're coming any- set, like with the, just like you've been up all night, whatever you've been doing, drinking, smoking, I don't care. Like, Come with the energy. Do not come with that lazy mindset. Have oh. you ever had to tell a girl or walk away from a scene and tell a girl something uncomfortable? I've definitely had to, like, luckily in the situations where I've had to do this, I've had a female director mm. and I've been able to kind of like approach the director and not have to be the bad guy okay. so much. And also, sometimes it's really hard, I guess, to hear it from like the person who's just about to like lick you. Yeah. So it's like, okay, this person is just about to go down on me. That's all they're going to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. So I let someone else kind of quarterback it to them. For sure. I respect that. I think though, is like, it's funny that there are certain things when we talk about it out loud, like, cause on set that Mm -hmm. happens all the time. It's not like, you know, on something that would never have happened. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like when I think about like going in the outside world, Mm -hmm. it's like, 
we should be vocal and and it shouldn't be embarrassing to us and not just embarrassing to anybody, but they should, you know what I mean? Like we are sex workers and you should know your body and come to set correctly. Even yes. if it's embarrassing to be like, I have to stay home. Now back then too, is a little bit sometimes because um, mm -hmm. agents would be like, you have to go to set you or like, you know, to. where they don't know how to talk about it. But mm -hmm. I think that when we shun away from the hard conversations is why mm -hmm. in our personal lives, sex can sometimes not be enjoyable for certain people either. Like yes. when I started, you know, having sex, not in the industry, mm. I found my so hard, I can't talk. Mm -hmm. I found it really hard for me to tell my male partner mm -hmm. what I wanted and when he wasn't doing something and I was like, yes. but wait, hold on. Like I was a I'm a porn star. I used to be a porn star, but I mm. couldn't because I didn't want to like not necessarily hurt his feelings, but I didn't know how to approach it. Yes. Where it's like sometimes we have to like just say it when it's uncomfortable for whoever yes. and just be like, you know what, girl, like maybe this isn't our day. Mm -hmm. Or you know what? Maybe you should eat pussy. Or, like in my situation yes. is like I couldn't get this guy to tell him I want him to eat my pussy. It wasn't something he, didn't, not that he didn't enjoy, but I don't think that he even maybe knew how, or I don't really like know how to do it. Okay. So then it was just like weird because I was mm -hmm. like, naturally I thought everyone just does it. Mm -hmm. So then the second time I had to say it, but it was yes. hard for me to like say it. It is hard. Um, but then I was just like, but then thinking, I'm like, why? I'm gonna mm. let him fuck my pussy. And I don't have a problem with that, but, but I can't talk little... to him and tell him, hey, move your time to the left. Like, that's a little directing. Yes. But you know what I mean? As far as context. But also, I think it's very important, too, because everyone has their spot. Everyone has some people need more pressure than others. Like me, I kind of like to be smacked around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I need a lot of pressure. For sure. For a little person, I need a lot of pressure. And that's something for me, I would say, I would feel like needs kind mm. of direction and to be vocal because, you mm -hmm. you know, if someone who they don't either maybe have never done the aggressive part or want to enjoy yes. it with you but don't know exactly what to do, you know what I mean? So I feel like why, you know, I kind of brought it up was because I was in porn, but I can only mm -hmm. imagine for other people who what we call like civilians mm -hmm. is because people are just fucking. They're not talking about it, they, you know what I mean? And yes. they're not, you know, for me, people also give porn such a stigma and all this. I was like, it's kind of educational. If you take what you want out of it, obviously, you know? Very educational. But it's like, you should be able to talk about it or know that mm. those are things, scenarios that could happen mm -hmm. and maybe it won't happen or what turns you mm. on. That's what I think for me is like the variety of what it is and see what, what you really like out of it. But I feel like people should, you know, in general, just talk more about what we like sexually or what turns us on mm -hmm. and it not be like such a taboo question. You know, that's why with private talk was more about like us having a private conversation and talking about some of the, like the sexual questions that mm -hmm. people don't really ask everybody and why it's so like shy. And I'm like, but the vast why? majority of people like are getting their sexual education from porn. Mm. So it's like when you get these scenes where people are being fisted, it's not exactly accurate to yeah. life. So well, that part I don't feel like is a, as far as that for using educational, yeah. I think that that, but I feel like as far mm. as opening up what taboo things or non-taboo things that you Definitely. like, and obviously you got to do your research. You know, the yes. first time I ever fisted somebody, her boyfriend was telling me what to do on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that. And people also too with porn think that it's all the way through. Mm -hmm. You know, there's cuts, there's like takes a long time. So there's it's like start and stop, and you know, kind of things where it's like, yes. yeah, we are sexual athletes, but you know, yeah. we need a little help sometimes. Hey, yes. spitter, spitter lube. Uh, ooh, I prefer spit, but because I smoke so much fucking weed, I'm so dehydrated all mm. the time. And I feel like sometimes I won't be like ready to go right away. I'm not like just dripping wet sometimes because I smoked three blunts that day. Damn I it. feel that. I've had that happen to me and then I just like gag myself with a dick and like make things work when yes. you're just like, when anyone you're like, spitting and nothing's yes. coming out, I'm like, yeah, that's pathetic. So I'll be like, no. hold on a minute. <laughs> Let me get in there. <laughs> but some people I found recently are very put off by the gagging sound. And I've always found the gagging sound to be very hot actually because it's like it's aggressive did somebody tell you that they're like, they're like yes what did they tell was, you? they were like stop that <laughs> i was like, oh but how do you stop gagging i mean to be fair i was <laughs> feeding into it a little bit <laughs> can you give time. us an example this was, this was a couple years ago this was like before the can pandemic can you give us an example of how wild you were into going <laughs> uh, do I, I, I'm like, do I have something? Is there a banana? <laughs> like, I wish I had it. a banana. Damn it. I'm going to be carrying bananas. <laughs> right? Or um, cucumber or something. We need to have. Was it? Okay. So let's, let's describe this visually. Is it because it was just like you were over vocalizing the gagging? Like, you know, because sometimes, you know, it gags, mm. you can little, you know, tears and you'd be like, yes. Really like you're a porno scene. Yes. Like, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I want to cry for the dick because it cries for me. It's so we should shed equal tears. Like, I love you. You know, I'm just, <laughs> e equality, everyone. It cries for you. We cry talk. together. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, tears of joy. I'm tears of lie. joy. I do love when someone fires off some knuckle children right into my face. Knuckle children? Yes. Who are these? <laughs> like, We're learning a whole lot here. Private talk yes. after dark. I hope you are enjoying this episode. And <laughs> I hope that you fired off some knuckle children. <laughs> Please donate those knuckle children to the both of us. <laughs> She can have it all. My share, she can have them. I don't think I want. Why are they called knuckle children? Because they're jerking themselves yes. off? Uh, I just got yes. that as I said it. I'm like, why? Oh, yeah, duh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those ones that at first when you hear it, you're just like, wait, what? And then you Where really did you hear it. this talk? This was many, many moons ago. Mm. And that is like definitely deep within the <laughs> roll of dicks of my mind. How many dicks do you think you've fucked? <laughs> Why I feel you, like I, you should be happy not sad why are you sighing over there because that's a lot of math but it's not oh, actually okay. it's not Let's a lot of generalize. math when I actually think about it because I've actually worked with the same like handful of people almost my entire career so when I think about the reality of how many guys I've slept with versus girls oh my god I've slept with so many women mm. but the amount of guys that I've slept with is surprisingly small okay so more than a hundred Oh, let guys? Women. A oh, women, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, more yeah. than a yeah. uh, Guys? Guys, way less than 100. Way less than 100. Way than less than 100. So 150 to 200 for the females? What, what are we looking at here, Madison? <laughs> I mean, does everybody count all the bricks when they build a brick house? Sometimes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> When you're real thorough. When you're real when thorough. When you're real thorough. I, you're I forgot to count my bricks. So mm. we're going to go back to, you're going to have to start all over again. Yes. So your number starts at zero from this point forward. <laughs> after you leave after dark. You're good. I like that. Yes. <laughs> it's all wiped away. <laughs> Describe something that's exciting in your life right now. Oh, exciting in my life right now. You know, I have finally, I guess, devoted a lot of time to working on painting. And I've always loved art and drawing. It goes with all my other little crafty thingies. But right now, I feel like I've crossed over into like a much more great plateau of that. Nice. Are you like doing like portraits or like scenery or lots of portraits actually? So I do like front, mostly trippy stuff. Okay. So it's a lot of geometric work. That's my bread and butter. I love math. That is definitely my thing. Have you ever sold a painting to a fan or just a? You know, I've sent customer? things out for free to people because the art is something that I just did for myself. Yeah. For so long. For sure. I like that. I feel like you definitely with everything that embodies what you know, what you've been talking about from like the accessories to the clothing mm -hmm. to even like directing more so on your own OnlyFans. It kind of like brings out all those artistic things. And I think that eventually you'll find definitely. out what really navigates to your soul because I feel like there's more to your painting. I feel like there's more that, you know, monetary wise that I think that you could do a lot more with that. I would love to share it more with people. And honestly, I was actually trying to think of like a painting that I wanted to do of you mm. before I came here. And I was like, OK, no, I need reference photos. I need and I was like, like how long uh, how long does that process really take? Does it depend on what kind of thing you're doing? It depends. And because like, that seems like a lot to think of like yesterday. I'm like, but you're coming here. To <laughs> like, like. Well, I've been excited about this for like since you hit me Yay. up. And I'm so sorry I missed your messages. I'm the worst with my DMs. I think people think that I hate them. Mm. I don't hate you. You know, I will say Just that I don't, I don't take any offense to that because, mm. you know, recently even getting like guests to come on here, like is where we hit them up on my DMs. And some, I didn't really look at my DMs before because mm -hmm. I was just, posting on my socials and so there's a lot of things going on there yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I would like hit up people I'm like wow they hit me up a long time ago they probably yeah. not gonna answer this but you know everybody did hate but I, me <laughs> yes but I also think that they changed to the app where it made it a little bit easier to kind of find people at least if you follow Definitely. it kind of like makes them out like uh separates them because before you know even <laughs> random but yesterday this I met this guy on the street <laughs> random mm -hmm. I was walking my dogs and he was like hey you want you wanted to try to like hit on me blah 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 so I was I like here's my Instagram <clears throat> but then he was like all right I'm gonna follow you and then he's like I'll DM you because I was like if you can get to me that way then you have you have a step two yes then I was like there's no way I'm like I look at there's a 5.9 million people and even on the direct list I'm like yeah he's unless he sees me on the street again yes. <laughs> waits there every day until he sees me Sorry if you're watching out there, but <laughs> but that's the thing. Do you check your DMs like I mean ever? I do now because okay. I use it a lot for networking. With as far as like you know what the show. Same. Um, but I never did before. Never. Like I and honestly, I just ever. didn't have time. That's exactly. It's not that you don't want to. It's yeah. You don't have any freaking. I time. think that maybe I had time. I just 
I'm learning my time management different now mm-hmm. because again, it's like, you know, we use it for certain things mm-hmm. like social media. Um, now it's just like I would promote my dance gigs yeah. or like Exotica. So I didn't need as much feedback when the girls, I would be talking to them. Like, so now it's more like because it's business more, I feel like that's why I'm more to look at it more because I had the time to scroll and look at everybody else's stuff. I just mm-hmm. didn't look at that part. I just became a scroller this mm. year actually but it's because i'm obviously pulled into crafting things but now that i started scrolling and i'm seeing what everyone's doing i'm like oh, you're all so beautiful you're so what? cute what or do you remember who your first celebrity crush was Ooh, that is a funny one because like i am the worst when it comes to celebrity crushes because i feel like i don't have any like real celebrity crushes i have always been like If you're not in a vicinity where I can get to you, I have no interest in you. Interesting. Yeah. My brain was always logical, even from the time of like when you're really young and you hit hormones, they're coming in hot and you're like, you're attractive, but I have no interest in you because you're not, you're not near me. Interesting. (laughs) Does that work well with dating? I think it does actually. Because I was like, for me, I always have, not again, maybe it's the FOMO because I'm a Gemini and I always like, there's something like kind of thing when's your birthday june 14th oh fun yes. i'm may 25th may 25th Yay. okay yes we love gemini's here we have a lot of gemini's on the- <laughs> there's so many gemini's in the industry too like oh uh, when fleshlight posts beings. their poster i'm like oh the birthday month thing <laughs> it's covered like there's not funny. one space that's empty i you know gemini's are very sexual creatures i think that you know we just know what we like yeah what is your craziest fan interaction Oh, goodness. Okay, I was actually just talking about this one the other day, oddly enough. And, you know, at expos, people bring you, like, the funnest things. Well, this guy walks up to the booth carrying a stack of Louis Vuitton shoes, all in my size. Stack. I was like, hi, friend. What is this? And he's like, okay, well, these are all for you. But two of them, actually, I need you to put on so I can take a picture of them. No problem. And... I'm going to take them home with me. And oh. they're the same. They're identical shoes. Oh. Two for me, two for him to take home. Oh. And I was like, okay. That's very generous. That's very generous. But I found out later that he would take the very thin heel of the high heel and he would stick that down his urethra. Ah! And he, he jerks <laughs> off that way. Ah! Like, what do you mean? He shoves the heel and he keeps it in there and jerks off? He puts it in and he jerks off with it in there. And that's the first time I found out that that is a thing that people do. I don't know how I feel about that. I, yeah. <laughs> I was reluctant at first. The shoes were very beautiful. And sir, if you see this, thank you. I still have them. Is that a thing? That is a thing. There's actually a company that how makes do you not toys bleed for that. Or like something's wrong with that picture to me. <laughs> I need to do more research, but that might be a part of the appeal. Oh, I guess some people do like the pain sensory of like, you know, yes, mm, that's you guys mm. got a lot of time on your hands or how do you even know that that happens? Like, I don't know. that's an interesting one that you kind of like, do you trip and fall into a shoe like something? And one day you're like, oh, I like that. <laughs> I guess. Do you drop a pencil? That's hilarious. Yeah, no, I still I'm trying to get the mental thing out mm. of my pit face, but it's really <laughs> still there. And I'm like, it just. It'll be the, there I used to always, like, I, the weirdest one that I, not weird, but, like, that I thought was just, like, how do you know that that, like, was, like, kicking the balls kind of thing, like, stepping on them, like, mm-hmm. that stamping, like, stomping or whatever. I just, like, how does that feel? Okay. But I, mm. myself, don't associate pain and sex, like, a pleasure. Not like, the I don't, extreme levels. Yeah, I, like no, I mean, I like bit. to be, for sure. Like, yeah. I like to, you know, I can be choked, I can be spanked, take my hair pulled, but not, like, to an excessive amount of level until, like, yeah. you know, in the, in the moment, too, and not every time. Yes. Not repeating, but, like, just doing yeah. the same motion. But for, like, when I Break think of, up. like, really things of, like, I don't know. I definitely don't know if I could be tied up. For sure not. Mm-mm. Okay, because you can't relinquish I don't like that losing control. control. Well, yeah, no, I don't. I mm. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me think about it. No, nope, hate it. But I guess because I was trying to think like maybe with the right partner, maybe in that setting, you know what I mean? Because I have done certain things like because before someone had told me like, oh, you've never been handcuffed. I'm like, no, and I'm not going to. But they tied me up with a shirt so I could still get out if I wanted to. So it was like, I guess, levels to getting to that point. Yes. Um, so I could see. But yeah, I don't know. I just like I like to be in control. I could be dominated for sure. I just don't mm-hmm. like not being. And that's thing. I've actually never been tied up in my personal life mm. because it is a thing 
that you truly have to release that control. And now in my life, I finally feel like I've met someone who I could trust with that level of control. Maybe it's a Gemini thing. Mm. I think it's a Gemini thing. I think it's very hard to let go of that. Mm. We're having, you know, we're finding all kinds of things out here. (laughs) What is advice that you would give yourself, your younger self? Oh, don't hold on to stuff for so long. Like just let go of whatever is bothering you because realistically that is not important. Big picture. Like there's always going to be something that bothers you. There's always going to be something that is like not quite the way you want it to be. I feel like for so long if something like happened or wasn't, it wasn't perfect, I just held on to that and it ruined my day sometimes. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. No ruining the days. No ruining the days. No, because only you can control your, how you react. Yes. I feel like walking around angry is just like being mean to yourself. Because no one else can really see your anger. It's just existing within you. So stop being mean to yourself, everyone. Stop being mean to yourself. We're not mean here at Private Talk. We are lovely. We are sexy lovely. little ladies talking about mm-hmm. all the fun things. What's the best pickup line ever used on you? Ooh. When I was, I think, uh, 17, I worked at a water park as a lifeguard. And just, you know, the basic, standing there every day, watching kids do their thing. This little ass boy (laughs) runs past me, like (laughs) not even big enough to know what he's saying, I feel like. He falls flat on his face in front of me and I walk over and I'm like, you okay? And he looks up and he goes, I'm sorry, I fell for you. I was like, oh! His daddy was a charmer. His <laughs> daddy was a charmer. His daddy definitely used that one. You should have said, hey, excuse me, where's your dad? Can yep. I see your dad? Can I see your father? Please. Have you ever taken home a souvenir from any um, someone you had sex with? Ooh. <laughs> or has someone, has, someone, has someone taken something of yours that you noticed that was gone as a souvenir? You know, I feel like a lot of people have taken <laughs> things of mine, especially some certain people on set. Oh, Ooh. no. Thieves. Yes. Definitely had my suitcase emptied out once before on a set. Oh no, that's and I'm terrible. Like, I don't know what they think they're gonna do with extra small panties that have been tailored to someone my size. Yeah, I just I yeah, stealing is one of my biggest like no nos. I'm just like, mm. why? Like what's the purpose? Like, Honestly, mm. I always kind of figure I'm like, okay, if someone took that you needed it more they than needed I needed it. Yes. For some reason they needed it. Have you ever gone through a partner's phone? Ooh, you know, I, it's so funny, so many topics that I've just been thinking about recently. Uh, I have not gone through a partner's phone in over a decade. Mm. Uh, because when I did that, I definitely realized that um, if you have to do that, then there's obviously something wrong there and you're probably gonna find something. Whether it's big or small, you're probably gonna find something. So I always err on the side of trust. And if I don't trust you, then we either got to end or we got to work on it. I like it. How many times you say you're a very sexual person, Mm -hmm. sex-wise, but you know that just means not only just with other people, with yourself. How many times do you think you masturbate in a day? How many times or how many times do I resist? (laughs) Like, how many times do you actually do it? How many times do you? (laughs) Well, I'm actually taking a masturbation cleanse right now. Okay. As we speak, which is very difficult. Is this something you've done before? This is something that I've done before, actually. So walk us through this (laughs) orgasm uh, cleanse. Yes, uh, because I get very aggressive and out of control with my masturbation. And I mean, I will have amazing, wonderful sex with my person and then I will go home still turned on from how amazing that was and then I'll masturbate five, six times. Mm. And I'm like, I can't do this every day. I have things to do. Yeah. So I make myself stop. So stop. how long is your cleanse for? Usually like a month. A month? Yes. That's a long time. Yeah. Mm. It can. Do you feel reset after the month? <laughs> I do, actually. What, what day are you on? You seem a little frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on like day two. <laughs> Mm, that's probably mm. the worst because you're jonesing. Yes. Especially if you masturbate five or six times in yes. a session. When you get past the first week or even two, I feel like you get into a groove of like, okay, I'm just going to distract myself. with. Are you not press. having sex with your person either? Oh, no, we're definitely having sex, but I'm like trying to resist coming when we're having sex. Oh, oh. So, so I you're know. you're not coming? I mean, 
That's the thing. I haven't seen him in two days. So when I see him next, that just I'll seems probably not it. productive. It's not productive. I could see doing it for yourselves, but Sometimes. like, why are you, you're like fighting yourself. Well, like, that's don't thing. come. <laughs> I really like it so much, but don't do it. That's the Gemini in you. That is you're the challenging me. yourself for that's no true. fucking reason. But honestly, he always because gets if, me. If you really <laughs> wanted to do it, then sex with him would be off the table too. Yes. Because no one like, that's like well, a guy thing. Like, I'm going to fuck you, but I'm not going to come. Like, yeah. no, bitch. I mean, true. I have seen some people that have done that, but true. you know, but girl wise but he's very busy as well so sometimes we don't get to see each other for like a good like two weeks mm. so i'll get to go this like two weeks of just like starving myself and of the perfect dick of the perfect dick baby you got a perfect dick mm. i tell him that every day did you name the dick or is it just perfect dick? it's just perfect Mr. Dick. perfect dick. yes i tell him that uh i'm someone who names everything i want to live on my knees in front of him i would pay rent Ooh. to live there i clean up after myself Nice. How, yeah. how charming of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's time for Truth with Texas. Ooh, this is one of my Truth favorite Texas. parts of the schedule. You know, Ooh, I'm falling out a little bit. All right. So how Truth with Texas is going to work is we've got four cards. Each ace mm. is a different type of question. We've got spicy, naughty, romantic, and kinky, which I think you're all of those in one. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Ooh, Ace of Spades, which is a naughty question. Naughty, naughty. Handcuffs or blindfold? Oh. You know, you like both, but. That's a hard one. You, you gotta pick one. I gotta pick one. Mm -hmm. mm. I would say, I would say blindfold. Blindfold. Yes. Wildest place you've ever had sex? Mm. I feel like I'm like really boring actually <laughs> in that regard like in my bed yeah <laughs> in my bed and definitely like ever in your life <sighs> i feel like you're a spontaneous lady i have a lot of sex with myself in crazy places where is the craziest place with <laughs> means sitting in my seat on an airplane next to an old lady while she sleeps oh did that turn you on or you <laughs> just were like trying to accomplish something you know i was trying to accomplish something it was a condition <laughs> Was this with a toy or your fingers? Um, with my fingers and a lollipop I had in my purse. Oh, <laughs> just thinks of these things. Sometimes I'll, you know. Did you eat the lollipop after? You got a snack <laughs> afterwards. That's why you have the lollipop. You worked up of appetite. How <laughs> long was this flight? This poor lady, how long was she <laughs> sleeping next to I think this here? was on my way back from New York. Oh, one of my flight. last times. Mm. Yes. That's funny. Yeah. I've definitely had people say that they've used a vibrator next to somebody. Oh, okay. But never an old sleeping lady. <laughs> yes. I've had sex on a plane at night. Ooh. Some people were sleeping, but I feel like that's the perfect time to do. It. That's the thing. I'm always traveling alone, mm. and I'm telling my partner constantly. I'm just like, I want to travel with you so we can do terrible things places. That's sexy though. Oh, I feel like the long flights for sure. It gets hard not to like want to touch yourself. Because yes. I'm a sexual person myself, and you get bored. I get bored. Yes. I'm like, why not? It's like, it's like that or drinking. <laughs> it's like, there's not much to do on a plane. Honestly, <laughs> and once I empty out their alcohol, which I have done before on the Virgin Airlines first class, I drank all of their champagne. Oh. And they were like, you have to go to bed now. <laughs> they, they cut you off and said, no, ma'am. Yes. I have probably sure have definitely been cut off before, I think. But not because I, well, I mean, in my own defense, yeah. I would say I wasn't drunk, yeah. but... They, I think at the time they said mm. I couldn't have more than two drinks on the plane. Oh, okay. Like that kind of thing. And I'm yeah, like, that was I'm like, thing. but I'm in first class. What does it matter? And some uh, people care, some people don't. And some people do. I think it's about who wants to be like power trip that day. For sure. Yeah. Uh, internationally, they don't care. Yeah. Like, so they're just like, drink the whole fucking thing. Do what you, you want to do. <laughs> but, <laughs> Ever hooked up with a friend's sibling? Ooh. No, actually, because I was homeschooled, so I oh. had very few friends growing up. So there was never a possibility. No to adult so. friends. Oh, yeah, I mean, not really, actually. Surprisingly, I like to keep my like hooking up with people. If I do, I keep it way away from all of my my friends and things because I don't like messy situations. Fair. All right, next card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need like a extended arm thing. All right, like, we'll grab her. Diamonds is a spicy question. Oh, spicy. Something you would not do sexually. Ooh, is there anything off limits for Miss Madison Ivy? 
I mean, I would not put any live creatures inside myself. That's a big one. <laughs> that is, a, yes. it could be a big one. <laughs> that is a question that I've gotten asked a lot on OnlyFans. There's a lot of very really? interesting questions. What are they yes. asking to put inside of you? And how do you even know that there's inside of you? Apparently, like, putting snakes inside of you is a thing. That's another fetish that I was completely unaware of before OnlyFans. So thank you, OnlyFans, what? for the knowledge. How do you know all these weird new things? <laughs> I know nothing. My fans, y'all need to step it up. Y'all's, y'all's fetishes are not like this. I got to ask you about one more. And if this gentleman is watching, I just want to know that, like, this is a first. But how do you, where do you put this? How do you put it inside of you? Where, what hole does it go in? I, from what I, my understanding is, you use the tail end. Keep the face out of there. So. So. Oh, I'm, but how is it not gonna bite you? Is that the point? I guess it's like my a voice just got real high. Snake. I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm like, it's those, you know, is it a particular snakes? snake that he sends to people, or like, who, it's, how it's do a you Brazilian do? vagina snake? You know, <laughs> is, is he the pussy, <laughs> the pussy snake trainer over here? <laughs> oh. Okay, so there's another fetish. Yes. Now this one. Is this from the same person? This is from a different person. Oh, it's God. different people. <laughs> this guy likes just photos of just your head and oh. your feet. And he likes to Photoshop them so they are like, your head is maybe sitting on a table, and your feet by your head. And there's no legs, there's no arms, there's no nothing. But he wants your head tilted up. He wants your nostrils expanded <laughs> so he can Photoshop <laughs> dicks in your nostril. I'm dead. <laughs> Anthony, is this yours fetish? <laughs> I'm trying to understand all fetishes. Okay, okay. You had me until you said shoving your nostrils spread open with dicks inside. Because I know at one time in life, there used to be a thing where they would do like, they would put different heads on different things. Like mm. people's bodies or like whatever. Mm. Like I think there was like even like a, game type thing like where people would like guess who's whatever thing mm -hmm. but stretching your nostrils to put dicks inside and like that's a little i mean no offense mm -hmm. but i mean i'm just gonna be quiet right <laughs> i don't have too many comments okay. about that one but what how do you respond to that because he's asking he's obviously asking you yes. if you'll do this well i'm very like do you even respond I, I honestly, I respond to everyone unless you are, even if you're like horribly mean, I'll be like, no, okay. and then you'll get blocked. But that uh, girl, there's so stand many, up for yourself. <laughs> so many people are actually not that they're really like great. Actually, I get a lot I mean, of awesome yes. fans, but people like that, I'm like, I respect most all kinks. Some of them I cannot condone because of like, I cannot condone like snuff films or like, you know, that sort of like faux snuff films. No. Like, we cannot promote that sort of thing. Like, yeah. that sort of lifestyle. It's just a lot. It's a lot. That's, that's a lot. But I will, you know, for someone like that, I'm like, you know, I hear you. That's interesting. I, I like some things that other people don't. But out of, like, personality, that's not my particular taste. So I'm not going to go into it with you. Yeah, that's a little lot for me. I think the weirdest, you know, request I ever got that I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it asked me to... Um, fill up a bathtub and act like I was drowning and <laughs> and then masturbate and like some other Wait, while you're drowning yeah and I was like you're aggressively I drowning like, you need to do this um, <laughs> no I was like this is not happening like mm. no nah, there's just no because at that point for me is like what I do like about OnlyFans is I love the fan interaction I love that mm -hmm. you know we can be as personable and like get yeah. the things where people do have fetishes whatever but there's also a limitation and boundaries of certain things. It's like it's not a dog and po like pony show. And so mm -hmm. at that point, it's like you're just there's something else that you need something to be so specifically and detailed about something mm -hmm. that I'm not the one. Yeah. There's a lot of other people, you know, whatever. Yes. Respectfully. See you later. <laughs> yes. You know. And it's just like realistically, you don't have the time to message everyone the length. I have one person particularly. They're like, you didn't answer part four of mm. message five that I just sent you. Part four is in my asshole. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying to me. I'm like, I try to answer all your questions, but I can't, like, no. No, thank you. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you sexually? Ooh, most embarrassing thing. We'll say on set and off. Ooh, on set. I would say me and this girl were doing this scene for Evil Angel forever ago, and we were supposed to be making a butt martini. Ooh. And so, you know, you put the t 
Everyone Between. loves a butt martini. We love those butt martinis. We got the big martini glass. We got both of our booties. And then, you know, we got to put the garnishes in there. So you got to put the cherry tomatoes in your butt. Oh. And then you got to try to get them in the glass. We could not get them in the glass. So me and her <laughs> spent the entire day trying to get eight cherry tomatoes out of each of us. Oh, how many did you get out? We didn't get any out. Ah! <laughs> Lost. <laughs> we need to go inside right now. <laughs> Bend over. Find Where's time tomatoes. for search parties? <laughs> <laughs> so they just got lost. Did that happen a lot? You know, I. How many other things have you lost <laughs> inside of you? Yeah, I, I lost a ring and a girl once. <gasps> definitely. Oh no, on purpose? Mm, oh, that was definitely an accident. I mean, well, I guess not on purpose, but yeah. like, was it on, in your finger? It was on my it... finger, and I was definitely getting way too aggressive. Oh. Like when you go second knuckle deep past that was point. Was it your ring or was it <laughs> my ring? Oh no! So I had to ask for my ring back because <laughs> we didn't realize it until like the did scene you, was over. Did you find it? We found it. Oh, luckily. that's good. I was gonna be like, man, the pussy is much more forgiving than the ass. Like ass is just like, this is mine now. <laughs> You're coming with me. <laughs> You're with me forever. All right, so offset? Hmm? Offset and even oh, emba- embarrassing. Ooh. Not too many embarrassing things that I can think of, I guess, off the top of my head, actually. Okay, well let's what about the worst hookup story? Mmm, worst hookup story. You know, I actually don't have too many of those because I don't hook up with people like I've only had I think one one night stand in my entire life Mm -hmm. because I am so weird about going home with people Mm. and I feel because I'm a very small person I feel very unsafe Mm. all the time so I'm constantly like okay I can't hook up with you until I get to know you really well yeah or I can know so are you kind of more of like a relationship type girl then I am a relationship type girl I was with the same person for about seven years Mm. and then I dated like one maybe two other people before the person who I'm actually currently with a little handful of dates maybe here but like actually go out on more than one little oh you're obnoxious I can't do Nice. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. I feel like, you know, it's one of those things like when you like that person, then you're just going to fuck the shit out of him multiple times. Yes. You're going to do lots of things. Yes. Have you ever had a partner tell you you were too much? Like they turned down sex from you because mm. you say you're so sexually, you're always yes. chasing the dick. <laughs> Actually, my first relationship, um, and we met when I was really, really young. And I feel like this is the way a lot of people's relationships go. You meet when you're really young and then you kind of just get stuck with each other. And he was always telling me like, you're too much Mm. like your personality even is just like so much and he would do the meanest things and I'm like why don't you just leave me and then I found out like later on you know all those things you suspect that someone's doing or they could be doing found out like a million horrible things about this person and I was like how did I spend and waste so much time with you so to anyone out there in a terrible relationship where you're putting in effort and you don't feel like this person is ever gonna do you right they're not and you need to take charge and you need to leave because sometimes just sticking it out is not the way to go listen to miss madison ivy i agree with you i think it's another thing people think that you know we we settle for things sometimes it's not about yes. like giving a try and stuff but you shouldn't have a feel that your partner's being mm. mean to you to a point where it's yes. like you know and, and also in like the too much thing it's you're never too much for somebody you know it's yeah. maybe that person but that you know you're never too much for any you know mm-hmm. who's the right person supposed to be in your life because Girl, you're just too much and you're fly. You're supposed to be too much. Supposed to be. <laughs> you're supposed to live your life. And you are doing just that. Definitely. Do you like sex toys in the bedroom? I love sex toys in the bedroom with someone who will take the time to learn how to use them properly. Because obviously, like, if you don't have those particular parts. You don't know maybe exactly how far you need to go, the direction even. I know a lot of people who will stick a toy in and they'll do this back and forth sort of thing. Like, I am not a windshield. What are you doing to me? What are you searching for? This is not TSA. Yes. This is not security. Mm -mm. In and out. Like, maybe a little, like, up and down. But none of this back and forth. But do you, with your partner, like, at home, do you guys kind of go through what your sex toys and, like, that sexually together? Like, so much so. I've never actually, and I just told him this, actually, I've never had a partner where, or anyone, actually, even just someone I, like, dated where we were able to talk about anything and everything that we liked. Like, oh, I like this. Ooh, do more of that. Oh, I got you this. Yeah. Like for my 
birthday, my first birthday that we spent together, he got me a Jason Love replica toy. And I was just like, I love this. That's cute. Like, oh my God, you know me so well. And I'd never had a person buy me a toy actually before that, which yeah. is absurd. It's the little things. It's like the thoughtful things that it's, you know, it's what it means they listen. Yeah. It means they care so much. Ooh. Give me an example of your dirty talk, Miss Madison Ivy. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny because like you said, when you're naked, you can like feel. Be dirty. The, the pet dirtiness. And now you're like, but wait, I, um, I'm, I'm a I porn have, star? I have clothes on. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> snap myself into. Mm. If Miss mm. Texas was here in the room with you, my big ass is shaking for you. You mm. want to stand up for you? Look, here, you want to oh, talk please? dirty? Look, okay, look. Can I get a visual aid? God damn. I want to bury my face between your ass. I want to lick that pussy all the way to that ass and tongue fuck you. I want to suck every delicious ounce of your pussy juice out and savor it while I finger oh you and then just mm, finger myself with your juices. She's so naughty and I love it. Mm. I hope you liked that dirty talk, private talk after dark. It gets real naughty here, Miss Madison Ivy. I love all the naughty things coming out of your mouth. And you know, maybe one day I'll suffocate you. Please, Lord, Last let card. the porn gods bless me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got clubs. It's a kinky question. Mm. Bondage, yes or no? Oh. I think we already know that answer. We know the same. Yeah, bondage always. But yeah, with uh, velvet ropes, for sure. Do right. you have your own personal velvet rope? I do have some on the bedside if that day ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> Shower sex, car sex. Ooh, which one is better or preferred? Prefer, or preferred. one or the other. Oh, there's like ups and downs to either of them because if you're in the shower, you have to have a water-based lube. And then if you're in the car, you gotta watch out. Luckily- Do you have lube handy in your shower? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> under, the under the sink. So it's tasteful. <laughs> tasteful, is it? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I have to make that extra lean over steps. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. What is a sex skill that you are most proud of? Mm. I think that double-handed glug glug action is pretty chef's kiss. Favorite time of day to have sex? Mm. Is every time of day a time? <laughs> <laughs> I could not choose, to not be perfectly choose. honest. Like, sex all the time, you're ready to go. Yes. Have you ever had a partner be too kinky for you? Mm. No, because I'm usually the aggressor, and I'm usually like people are having to re- of almost like position themselves in their minds like okay i have to become almost like the, <laughs> the, the sub se <laughs> the sexual being yes how many positions do would you say that you do in your personal life or is it just like one and two are you mm. is it a multiple thing or is it just you know it's definitely a, a multiple thing it's i like to change it up i like to roll it around like especially if you're in like doggy to just kind of like fall over on your hip a little bit and kind of do that, the lazy dog, yeah. I suppose. Lazy dog. And then just flip around into that missionary. But I like that missionary with my legs. Like, you're trying to break me in half like a Kit Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I love how tiny you are. You're all just break me in half. Break me in half. Do it. <laughs> do it to me. <laughs> hmm. What is the most number of times you had sex in one day? Oh... I feel like it's With not a partner, even a not number of times, but it's literally like a length of time. Like, I think so. The longest session is what you're trying to say. Yes. Okay. What's your longest session? I think I sucked my man's dick for about like ten hours last week. Ten hours? Yes. How do you? You have any breaks? I actually just found out I have arthritis in my jaw. This is after the 10 hours of sucking or were you trying to challenge yourself and this is what happened to you? I found out that I had arthritis in my jaw and I said, challenge accepted. So so then you sucked for 10 hours? Yeah, but that was like months ago that I found out about the arthritis and I'm just like, we'll deal with this as it comes. Mm. But that's my mm. one of my greatest enjoyments is sucking on him. But how do you do this for 10 hours? Like, I like sucking dick mm. too, girl, but 10 hours and you're, you're like, you got stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> I take specific days made just for sucking his dick. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure he loves that. He, he said it was like a, laying on a cloud for an entire day while getting your dick sucked. Interesting. Do you have to like go everywhere together to be continuously sucking? Because we move throughout the house. Mm. So, and sometimes <laughs> in the backyard and then sometimes in the car. 
Spontaneous. Yeah. I like this. Dick sucking mm-hmm. all day. Mm-hmm. Ten hours. Is that a record for you? I feel like that is definitely like, or is this something that you like you like to do for your partners? I have always liked. I honestly prefer to give head than receive head. Okay. And I actually just now in my life have found someone who does it the way that I like it. But like you said, it's so hard to ask for like, do this. And almost you don't even know sometimes what you need them to do. Yeah, because I feel like also too, everybody's, because their bodies, like the way their tongue feels, this is whatever. Like, and also it's just chemistry. Yes. You know, and even though you can have chemistry with someone still doesn't know that they exactly know your body. Because I always Definitely. feel like it's like the more times you have sex with someone you like, they kind of figure it out. They do. Because it's like, well, if they're in tune with you, mm-hmm. they get it. Because it's like caring about... If that, if like you can tell by either noises, that's again why you can't fake it. Mm-hmm. Because then they think they're doing something right. They're going to go back to that bad thing. That's a big one. It's like you're you're giving people bad uh, data. Bad data. Bad data. There is an ace of hearts ca- heart card around here somewhere. But I don't know where it is. I lost it. I think my ass when I got up, you know, just mm. went somewhere. So. <laughs> I could see it. My booty. It eats things. Hey, mm. here we go. The Ooh. magical card is Ace of Hearts, Ace of Hearts, which is a romantic question, which mm. I feel like you're a very romantic lady. I am. What is the most romantic thing you have done for a partner? Oh, I think. Besides the 10-hour blowjob. That's kind hour. of fucking romantic. I've. <laughs> um. Well, for my person's birthday, because they were kind of always like, oh, you know, birthdays are just aren't. But they're not a big deal to me. Mm-hmm. So uh, the Four Seasons down here in, I think, like the Beverly Hills area, you can rent out the rooftop, and they'll send, set up, like, a campsite for you. Cute. So they'll put, like, a queen bed out there with, like, a big canopy tent, and, like, I had a private chef come out and cook us dinner, and we roasted Ooh, marshmallows. I love that. And Romantic. all these presents and stuff, so. Mm, you going to be my girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I girl. like you're winning my heart. I'm definitely spoil you. Hey, my ass will spoil you, that's for Ooh. sure. See, that's what I want to be spoiled with. Like, I can buy my own presents. I want that. Mm, mm. I'll give you a presents with my booty. Ooh, booty presents. Turn ons, what are yours? Ooh, I would say on the lighter side and the nicer side of things, kissing. I love someone with nice lips and like mm, that passionate grinding on each other. That gets me so turned on and like gets you tripping. Couldn't making out or cuddling then? Making out, definitely. Dinner date or movie date? Mm, I love food, so I would have to go with dinner. But if the movie theater is empty, then movie theater. <laughs> Favorite part of body on the opposite sex? Mm, besides the, the dick. dick. We know that that's where you're going, girl. <laughs> you know me so well. <laughs> it would have to be, honestly, a good personality. Someone who can make me laugh. Like, There is not a perfect type of person, perfect body style to me, whatever it is. But oh my God, if you make me laugh, for some reason that makes my pussy wet. Um, I, like, I mean, that's like, you know, you're, you're, you're in the intellectual, like, mm. you know, you're stimulated in other ways. And, you know, it's, yes. sometimes that pussy just needs to get wet and laugh. Nothing wrong with that. Honestly. <laughs> Naked or lingerie? Ooh, I feel like I only wear lingerie when I'm having sex or when I want to have sex. Like, this is like this is my mating dance. Like, this is on. your mating. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite place to be kissed? Mm, I'd say like my neck right in here. Like bite me, suck on me a little bit, kiss me right there. Get it going. Mm. Let's see, last question. Deal breakers. Mm. What are the deal breakers for you in a relationship? That one would have to be someone who is like completely closed off to new ideas and like just even just talking about things. I don't need anything from you financially I don't want anything from you like except for just communication like that is the number one and then obviously like certain red flags can't abide like if you don't want to be communicative about like what you want personally I've told people like you if you want an open relationship we can have an open relationship but you have to tell me and there's certain guidelines like testing and condoms. We have to talk about all that. Mm-hmm. And I'm very forthright about this. And then I've had people just completely disregard that and bring people home and fuck them in my bed while I'm not there. No go. No fucking in the bed. And what? you better fucking communicate with my motherfucking yes. girl, Miss Madison Ivy. That's all I want. 
Thank you so much. That is the end of Truth With Texas. I feel like you passed with flying colors. There's only one way to pass here at Truth With Texas after dark. Where can we support you? Where can we get going? All your OnlyFans. Tell us where we can get you there. Well, because the Instagram monsters are cruel, you can now find me at Ivy's 420 League on Instagram. And on OnlyFans, it's OnlyFans.com slash Madison 420 Ivy. Is there anything you would like to ask Miss Texas? When can I get up in that ass? Oh, I'm sure you know, that's the question. You know, that's the question. You know, it's funny is I just don't do anything with anybody on my OnlyFans but myself. Oh. So it's only myself and like custom stuff like that. You know, I but I have you. I have been open to the idea of maybe working with some ladies because very you know, select ladies. I, yeah, not only that, but I feel like you mm. know, I mean, I'm bored. I'm single. Why not? Like you know. Bitch needs to get out of come, you know, yes. have, have, I'm not having myself with no orgasms for a month. That's just not happening for Miss Texas. <laughs> I'm definitely going <laughs> to. The thing, once me I and see my, my boyfriend, me and my Hitachi are, you know, we're best friends. He makes me sure that I, I go to, to sleep that. every single night. <laughs> and, you know, it's a great day here. <laughs> that. All right. Thank you so much again for coming on Private Talk After Dark. Guys, make sure you go and follow Miss Madison Ivy. And until next time.